are back at the Madras Motor Race Track in Sri Parambadur, Tamil Nadu. The weather is a little muggy. We've got a collection of really hot cars. The Autocar India team is all hands on deck, and that can only mean one thing. It's the most wonderful time of the year for us here at Autocar India and no, I don't mean a public holiday. It is of course the Autocar India Track Day and boy do we have some variety with us here today. We've got everything from a 3-cylinder all the way to a 12-cylinder. But variety is good, two things have always remained constant. This track and this man right here, Mr. Narain Kartikeyan. Hi Narain, how's it going? Very good, thank you. So tell me, what do you think about this lineup? Well, it's a, it's a very, uh, you know, it's an awesome lineup this year. We have a lot of nice cars and, um, you know, I'm really looking forward to this. But also, have you noticed, of all these cars here, just a handful, maybe just one or two, are still naturally aspirated. They're not turbocharged. Everything else is forced induction now. Yes, except for the Indy uh, track day car, which has a two litre um, uh, normally aspirated engine and the little uh, Maruti Suzuki, I think. Everything is turbocharged. A turbocharged car actually uh, it delivers the power much better and, and so on. But I'm, a, I'm from the old school. I always like NA cars. But it's not just the cars. It's also this track. It's been our home for the last 10 years. And you've put down lap times for over 100 cars now. Firstly, this track, this is a great layout. And, you know, I grew up driving here. And, um, you know, we have a lot of good memories. As you said, we've driven over 100 cars here. The driver and the track remains constant. So we could always do comparisons to, you know, past cars and uh, compare it to the car lineup today. So like you said, a phenomenal lineup here today. I can't wait to see what kind of times these cars put down. So without any further ado, let's head to the pits, set up and get this show on the road. Now yes, it is a day we all look forward to every year, but that doesn't mean it's all fun and games. We have a tight schedule and a strict regimen. All the cars have to be adequately fueled, sitting on fresh tyres with the pressures bumped up by 4 psi. Our satellite-guided V-Box timing gear has to be securely strapped into place, the onboard cameras have to be mounted and we even try to record the noise wherever possible. And of course, though we have a professional racing driver at the wheel, for cars upwards of 300 horsepower, the helmets must come off. As ever, we're going up the table from the slowest lap time to the quickest. So, it's not much of a surprise that we start with the only SUV in this year's batch. The EcoSport created quite a stir back in 2013 when, with just a 1-litre engine, it set a lap time of 219.3. This facelifted car, however, isn't as quick, clocking in at just 2 minutes 21.39. Dynamically, I would say, you know, probably this has gone a bit softer, in my opinion. And um, um, the engine doesn't feel so strong as the previous uh, generation car. But um, there's no lap time benefits because uh, the ESP cuts in uh, very strongly. Probably a much more comfortable car than what it used to be. But uh, dynamically, uh, we're giving away a lot of time. Up next, a track day veteran, the Maruti Suzuki Swift. It may use the same engine, but it's almost 100 kgs lighter. It also set a 2 minutes 18.44 second lap time, almost a full second quicker than the old one. The sporty feel of the, the first generation Swift to now, uh, it's come down drastically, I feel, and um, uh, nevertheless, it's, a, it's, a, it's not a bad car. I think it's uh, compromised a lot by the tyres it runs. I've never heard of this brand, so uh, I think it's exceptionally uh, hard tyre for mileage. So, you know, these are some of the factors that probably don't add up uh, to the lap time. Next up, Skoda's blue-collar rocket, the Octavia RS. With more power, a lowered suspension and fatter wheels, it was so quick it almost took the crown for the fastest front-wheel drive car, posting a time of 2 minutes 6.8 seconds. Yeah, the biggest um, difference from the other Skodas to the VRS, the current VRS, is uh, you know obviously we feel a lot more from the engine because it has 230 horsepower. The the dynamics of the car uh, also is very capable, I must say, on the track. Um, and uh, for for this sort of car to do a two minute six second lap here is uh, quite an achievement. Uh, minding you, this is, these are standard tyres which have very rounded shoulders uh, because it's been because of wear and tear. 
and um, you know finally Skoda has decided to bring the entire package not just uh, you know aesthetics next on the list the second most powerful car we have with us today the Mercedes AMG S63 coupe but how come it's so far down the list well you can sort of see why can't you Merck's opulent big coupe is based on the S-Class limo, but it's also an AMG with a 612 horsepower V8. We just had to, didn't we? It's heavy, it's big and you know, it has the air suspension, so it's very comfy. Uh, but um, you know, overall, it's still a lot of fun. It has a lot of torque and you know, you, it goes sideways if you want it to and so on. So. It, I feel bad to drive this car on the, on the racetrack. Now Audis aren't always the first cars to come to mind when you think about fun driving dynamics, but every now and then Audi gets the balance and setup of one of them just right. And then, if the car also happens to have one of Audi's energetic, rev-happy and powerful engines, like a 354 horsepower turbocharged V6 under its hood, it makes for a great overall package. Well, it's a big improvement uh, compared to the older generation of the S5, uh, mainly from the way the four-wheel drive system behaves. So the other car inherently had a lot of understeer built in, but now this car, you, you know, it's a lot of fun. You can, you can actually slide the car and um, on the track, which means, you, you know, you, you, have, you can take sharper lines and the ride even, it's quite, quite nice, uh, quite uh, uh, not, not bone shatteringly stiff, but uh, pretty supple. Um, so on the road, it must be a phenomenal car to get from point A to B. And now, breaking the two-minute barrier is, to my eyes at least, the sexiest looking car on this list. Gorgeous in yellow, the Aston Martin DB11. But it's more than just a pretty face. Its big V12 engine sounds the part, it has plenty of grunt, the chassis lets you carry in a fair amount of speed and it isn't too intimidating to drive quick either. It, this car is really meant to cruise around and to, you know, it's more of a touring, you know, a grand touring car. Um, so probably not well suited for the track, nevertheless it's very competitive and, um, you know, I mean it looks stunning from the outside and, um, you know, it drives the same way as, as, as it looks. Now here's a curious one, the Porsche 718 Boxster. As ever, the chassis is superb. It is willing to attack corners and dynamically, it is pure Porsche. But downsizing has hit the Boxster hard. Gone is the screaming flat six engine and in its place a turbocharged four cylinder. Yeah, well, the chassis dynamically is phenomenal as, a, as you expect from a, from a Porsche, uh, but then yeah, uh, you, you definitely you miss, miss the flat six. That's for sure. Um, I mean, the, it doesn't have much grunt. Obviously, this is the base 718. Um, so we have, you know, we have 300 horsepower to play with. But uh, uh, you know, the the chassis is capable of handling so much more. A significant way ahead is the most potent member of Audi's A5 brat pack, the RS5. It's got almost 100 horsepower more than the S5 as well as a stiffer, sportier chassis with a lot more grip. So it's no wonder it's a full 4 seconds quicker, clocking in a seriously impressive time of 1 minute 57.55 seconds. I thought there would be you know, slightly more of a difference in lap times, but uh, the biggest difference of, uh, from that car to this car, the S5 to the RS5, is um, you know, that car was a lot more you know, easy to drive on the track probably because it let you slide more and so on but this car again it's built with a lot of understeer so um, um, you know we, we have the four-wheel drive system kicking in and then it really uh, you know goes into a you know the front keeps pushing until you back off the throttle now this is the big head-to-head -head we've all been waiting for m5 versus e63 and now you know which one was the slower of the two the monstrous 600 horsepower twin turbo V8 engine is as ever a big plus point and it is phenomenally quick in a straight line. Unfortunately, the new M5 feels very skittish to drive at the limit and that means you can't put the power down as easily. I think the character is you know, pretty different to the older M5, the F10 platform, but uh, lap time wise, of course, it's faster. 
Um, so, um, you know, it, it has a very, very, very strong engine. Uh, it's exceptionally quick on a straight line. It's, uh, it's pretty heavy and uh, I think with all the <coughs> additional four-wheel four -wheel drive system and so on, um, it feels, um, you know, dynamically it feels a little bit weaker. Uh, but as I said, the difference was not so big. I think 0.2 seconds or something. Next up, it's the tin top racers from Volkswagen Motorsport which lap the track within a second of one another. The Vento TC4A has been developed to meet new 2019 Indian touring car regulations and it did a 1 minute 55.48 second lap. We already tested the Ameo Cup car last year, so what's it doing back at our track day? The car now has retuned springs and dampers, more torque from the engine and much improved MRF slicks. Obviously, um, you know, a lot of safety aspects are built into the car. We have a proper low, a roll cage, six-point harness, slick racing tyres, a little bit of arrow on the cars as well. So, um, yeah, it is uh, meant to train the young drivers and that's exactly what it's doing. And here it is, a full two and a half seconds quicker than the M5, the AMG E63S. So how is it able to do that? Well, a lot of it is down to the air suspension, which sounds ironic in a track environment, but it makes the E63 so much more compliant over the bumps around the MMRT. I mean, I'm really surprised. I, you know, I, I drove the M5, then jumped into this car, um, and it, it just you know drives the track much better. So it's more compliant on the bumps and and so on and so forth. Like as you said. It's been reversed now, the, the E-Class seems to be, the E63 AMG seems to be the benchmark. Um, and it's the fastest sedan on the track, uh, thus far. The 488 Spider has the distinction of being the very first Ferrari at an Autocar India track day, the most powerful car here with 670 horsepower, and also of drawing everyone's attention to it like a big red magnet. It's incredibly potent, it revs like it's not turbocharged, and it's amazingly easy to drive quickly. Well, considering it's a Spider, you know, uh, no one expected it to be this fast because the torsional rigidity of the car is much lower than the uh, normal car. Yeah, it, it, it behaves more like a normally aspirated engine, so you don't have any of this uh, lag in the bottom end, and, um, and yeah, it goes to the red line very quickly, and it keeps pulling all the gears, and. Um, the handling is very neutral. It doesn't, um, you know, it's not, it doesn't catch you out anywhere. Um, so, yeah, it's a very neutral behaving car, and uh, anyone can go very quickly to the limit. I think. The AMG GTR in our brief encounters with it in the past struck us as quick and loud and crazy, but today we saw firsthand what it was really meant for. It is quite simply a track weapon. And what time did it do? A 1 minute 48.36 seconds. That's right, not only was it the fastest road car of the day, it was the fastest we've ever tested here. They say they have, they have a lot of input from Lewis. I'm sure he has, he has he's given his bit and the car is so quick, unbelievable. I'm just, you know, it went faster than the, you know, the previous generation GT3 RS, which held the lap record. Uh, yes, it comes with the Michelin Cup Sport 2 tyres and, and so on and it is, you know, it's hard edged, very difficult to drive and, and uh, you know, for us, for racing drivers, it feels like a track car. Uh, so, I mean, I'm just surprised at how fast it went and, uh, yeah, it's phenomenal, uh, unbelievable, I have no words. You might remember the JA Motorsport Indy 2.0, the car that sat at the top of our lap board for the last five years. Well, this is the Indy 2.0 version 2.0 with more power, better aero and more downforce. Narain did a 1 minute 42.54 compared to the 1 minute 43.30 earlier. It has a new motor, of, uh, we, they've changed it from the Renault 2 litre to a Mountain Tune 2 litre engine which has a little bit more horsepower, bigger rear wings, more aerodynamics, more downforce basically and the car is much faster. That's uh, fun. Not as much as the GTR though. <laughs> so there you have it, two lap times shattered, both for road legal cars as well as for track cars. Will we see more such upsets from this year's batch of two-wheelers? Watch our Bike Track Day video to find out. <laughs>